Hey there, and welcome back to No Recipe Required. My name's Dave, and today I want to do a, a soup for you. Perfect for fall, and it's one of my favorites, butternut squash soup. Now, I've got a recipe for that already on the site, but we're going to change it up. I like to take these uh, you know, traditional recipes or, or platform recipes, change them up, and, uh, and do new things. In this version, I'm going to add some, uh, some coconut milk and a little bit of curry for a curry and coconut butternut squash soup. It's really uh, kind of like got more exotic flavors and it's, uh, it's really, really quite tasty. Throw some garnishes on there, some nuts, some raisins, some of the traditional curry, spice, curry ingredients, and it's absolutely awesome. Let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start our soup with, shockingly, butternut squash. I've just diced it up here into um, pieces, you know, between an inch, two inches. Coat it with olive oil, and then I'm going to roast it in, a, uh, in an oven at about 300 degrees, 350 degrees until it gets nice and tender. I just lay mine out on some foil here, throw the whole thing right in the oven. Probably take 45 minutes or so. While our butternut squash cooks off, we're going to go ahead and start our soup with our uh, mirepoix, which is how we start many of our soups. I've just got a um, diced onion, a couple carrots, a couple stalks of celery, and then I'm going to toss into my soup pot with some olive oil, some salt, some pepper, and I didn't really take a lot of time to um, cut these up real nice and neat because we're going to blend the soup so it doesn't really matter what shape they're in. I am, there's a few garlic cloves in there as well that I just diced up. I'm going to let these cook down over medium, medium high heat until they are um, you know, nicely wilted down. Probably about 15 or 20 minutes. My mirepoix has gone now for 15, 20 minutes. The onions are nicely translucent. Here I'm going to add in my curry powder because we're making curry powder, butternut squash soup, or curry butternut squash, curry coconut butternut squash. And uh, your curry powder like this, I really like to uh, cook off before adding uh, liquid. It can get kind of grainy if you don't do that step. And so I'm going to add it in and just let this cook for probably another seven, eight minutes or so with that curry powder in there. Get some of the uh, the rawness out of the um, out of the uh, out of the texture, out of the flavor. After the curry's been in there seven, eight minutes, I'm going to add my diced apple and just kind of toss that in there. Doesn't really matter too closely now the uh, the order of the ingredients. I'm going to throw a little bit of apple juice in there, probably half a cup's worth and just give it a stir, kind of shake loose all that good stuff off the bottom. Season with a little bit of salt and pepper and then um, I'm going to go pull my butternut squash out of the oven and then we can come back and add it. Butternut squash is done. Now I just cooked it till, till it was tender. Um, you know, little tiny bits maybe golden brown are totally fine but you don't really need to go too long in there. I like the foil because you can just wrap it up. No muss, no fuss. And then um, I'm going to cover the entire soup with chicken stock. I just pulled my stock out of the freezer and melted it off. If you happen not to have enough stock, which I don't really do, you can just uh, come back, add some water. You want to get, you know, probably about two inches higher. Than the um, you know than the butter squash and the um, the ingredients in there, but a touch more salt, a touch more pepper, and uh, I'm just gonna let this go until all the um, ingredients in there are soft. The apple burnet squash is already pretty soft, but we need to get it to a place where we can blend it all together. Once everything is nice and tender, we're gonna blend it together. Now you could definitely do this in a uh, in a regular blender. You just gotta be careful with hot liquids. If you don't know what I'm talking about, look it up on the internet. It's an important lesson to learn. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use my stick blender, but before I do that, I'm going to throw in just a couple, not too many, sage leaves. Um, I'm just going to tear them up. I like to add them now at the, uh, at the end to keep a little bit of that kind of freshness in there, but there will be plenty of time for those to kind of cook down a little bit. So two large sage leaves, and then we're going to go ahead and puree until we've got a nice smooth soup. You want to get everything nice and smooth, it'll take a few minutes. And we're going to add our final ingredient is a little bit of coconut milk. I've got maybe like half a can in there. I leave it to the end because it's another liquid. You don't really know how thin or thick your soup is going to be until you've got it uh, pureed like this. So why not just leave that until the end and you can add a little more, add a little bit less. You want to add it in there, mix all that up. 
You want to make sure you give it a, uh, a final taste for seasoning. Ah, oh, this is beautiful. It's got that nice sweetness from the coconut, a little hint of curry, a little bit more salt and pepper, and we are good to go. Let's serve it up. Okay, let's go ahead and plate our butternut squash coconut curry soup. I like to go in a nice, obviously, a uh, little soup bowl here. Plate would probably be a little awkward. Then uh, you can garnish it with whatever you want. I go with maybe some uh, some raisins like this and a few pine nuts. Hopefully you can get them to float a little bit. And there you go. I'll see you next time on Nowhere Spear Required. <laughs>